Uh, we expected a big response, and we certainly expected it to not be all that positive because of what we were doing. What we did learn, I think, is because of the movies and because of the MCU, uh, the awareness of this character and, and, and uh, uh, you know what happens to him is so much broader than it used to be. So we were very much prepared for sort of the hardcore monthly reader comics audience to kind of, uh, you know, uh, how they would respond to it. I don't know that we quite anticipated uh, that it would go this big, where literally just everybody seems to know about it, which is pretty exciting. We're finding out that there's some division between Steve and the Red Skull that we didn't know about immediately, uh, that they may view Hydra very differently. The, the Red Skull's history actually isn't, in the comics, all that connected to Hydra. He's worked alongside and co-opted them at times, but you know, the Skull does. Skull has a very different ideology of his own, uh, and he's typically used Hydra is just a t another tool to advance his own causes. Uh, whereas the version of Hydra that Steve seems to have been indoctrinated in is much more the thousands year old version that we saw in books like S.H.I.E.L.D. by Jonathan Hickman, you know, that are, uh, have some bigger, very different goals and very different origins. So that's something that the Skull didn't count on, but that we're starting to see as we learn more about this new past that Steve has. Uh, you know, we're learning a lot more about that version of Hydra. If you've read things like S.H.I.E.L.D. or Secret Warriors, there are going to be a lot of great payoffs. Um, you know, I'm big fans of that stuff, so uh, you're, you're definitely going to see some of those characters and some of those concepts in this show. One of the most interesting things about the story as we go on is going to be how you define that and how you categorize that. You know, I think that that's something that the readers are really going to struggle with. You know, we're four issues in now. Four issues and when the first issue came out, everybody was outraged. After the second issue, people were kind of relieved, like they, they had a, a, an understanding more of what was happening. Uh, when the third came out, they were actively really kind of happy because they, you know, we end it where you see he disobeys the skull and everything. And so we were like, oh, he's going back to being a hero. Then we did the fourth, and you see Steve do some very questionable things. And now people are uncertain again, and that's part of the fun, is, is we're going to be pulling you in all those directions frequently, so you just, if we, if we do our job right, you may not be sure where you come down on where Steve is for a while. And I think in terms of the flashbacks, you know, I, they, they're my favorite part of the book. I, I really am enjoying writing this sort of new origin and new background and new life for young Steve, so we've got some great stuff coming on that side of the book. As we go forward, uh, you know, we're gonna, the timeline is gonna start speeding up and you're gonna start seeing, you know, Steve through the years. And uh, that gives me a chance to kind of do an alt history that's, uh, uh, you know, I think it's gonna be some of the stories we do. In terms of the Skull's journey, I mean, he's he's been on kind of a whirlwind, uh, you know, with getting Charles Xavier's brain and all those things in, in Uncanny Avengers. And uh, in terms of Kovic, I knew when we were planning this story that I wanted it to be a Cosmic Cube story because a lot of the best Red Skull and uh, Cap stories are Cosmic Cube stories. And even, you know, this cube is obviously a callback to a classic Wade and Barney Cosmic Cube story. So I, I knew that, and, and it was already established continuity that Cosmic Cubes become sentient, that, that's, that, they, that they evolve, and that they probably become Beyonders or something. So uh, I love that, like the craziest uh, Marvel sci-fi stuff when you get into that part. So I definitely wanted to do that. It's just a lot more interesting to have it be a, a living character rather than just a little box that everybody's waving around. And it makes everything that happens from here so much more interesting because obviously Steve is going to be uh, very interested in what Kovic is doing, where Kovic is. Kovic obviously knows the truth about all this. Uh, and so, you know, those are, uh, some of those things are going to play out over in Thunderbolts, over in Jim's Thunderbolts book, uh, but they'll reconnect with the Catholics as well.